checking, checking, checking. We're good to go. All right. So today's talk, we're not waiting for stragglers. They'll catch it on the replay. Um, is Satoshi's over fiat. Why? Why do you see weird numbers in this server? 57,000, 280,000, it's sats. What is this? We're measuring in Bitcoin unit, unit measurements, right? One Satoshi is one one millionth of a Bitcoin. So eight decimal places. If there was a one there after the zero, that would be one Satoshi. So why are we doing this? Is it just because we want to be weird? Um, no, there's a very, very basic premise that we're operating under if we are trading in Satoshis. Now, when I say Satoshis, also recognize that if you're trading in Ether, uh, you use that value. You know, that's it's no big deal. You can still use the Ether value. Now, why would you use one or the other? This is a very common question. It might be a better price on Ether. Ether may have gone up, therefore it's stronger in buying power. So you might want to use that to buy uh, whatever you're trying to get. So there's different times to use different things. Maybe you're just putting fiat in and you bought Ether and you want to send it over really fast. Um, so, you know, you're going to use the Ether price rather than having to sell that into Bitcoin be subjected to the volatility of either of those two and get it, um, you may just want to do an ether. One is not better than the other. It depends on the circumstances. This is a misconception that ether is always better to buy in ether. It's always better to buy in Bitcoin. Like everything, it's all relational, so it's important to remember that. So let's get to the task at hand here. Why are we measuring in Satoshi value uh, as opposed to dollars? Maybe we're putting in money to make more dollars. Why do we give a shit about Satoshi value? This is a question some of my clients ask me, not like that. <laughs> They're just confused why I'm saying, hey, pay attention to how many Bitcoin you know, it's equal to after an X period of time. So we're operating, and you, if you don't operate from this, what I'm about to say, if this is not your premise, maybe don't do what I'm saying. And maybe you should use dollars. Maybe you should use uh, some other value USDT, T, whatever it is you want to use, tether value, you can do that. But here's the premise that I operate under, that most of the people in this server operate under. And since I made this switch, I have done much, 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 much better than when I wasn't doing this. And I was concerned about the Ponzi dollars that we love so much. Um, so this is the premise. Bitcoin, just Bitcoin, or it could be Ether if you're only trading in Ether, but Bitcoin is going to be worth more in six months or a year, or sometime in the future than it is right now. That's the premise. That's the whole shebang to this. If you disagree with that, like I see a lot of people in this server, and just when things aren't going well, they want to talk about, oh, you, the flippening is happening. Did you see Ether's market cap? It's getting real close to Bitcoin. If this happened two more months in a row, it's going to flip. And listen, it may flip. It totally may happen. There are a lot of arguments to be made that Ethereum is a better platform right now than Bitcoin. But uh, usually, usually when I hear those types of arguments, it's from people who have not owned Bitcoin for a long time. They maybe just recently got into the market of altcoins or Ethereum or whatever it is. And they're making the mistake of thinking that because maybe it's better tech right now and there's a lot more things built out on it, that it's superior. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And that that means it will overtake the market cap. In case you guys haven't been paying attention, for the most part, this is a pretty irrational space. It's hard to make sense of what's going on. That's probably why you joined the server. It was a little overwhelming and at least confusing. And then even if you got into it, you're like, what the fuck? It doesn't work the same way it did yesterday or last week or last month. So if you just think it's so obvious that Ethereum is going to pass Bitcoin, uh, go for it. Invest accordingly. I don't do that. I always hold Bitcoin because I think Bitcoin is going to be more expensive at the end of this year than it is right now. Who knows? And I have reasons for that, and I don't really want to get into those right now, but that's the premise. So if we're operating under this premise, why is that important? Because if Satoshis are going to be worth more in the future, that means if we gain Bitcoin, we also gain dollars. So it's a two for one. It means as long as our Bitcoin is going up, our dollars are also going up. This applies to euros, whatever, whatever your fiat currency is. So this is a very important premise and then action that we take from that. Now, there are also other benefits for trading in Satoshi value or Ether value. One is a psychological component, um, and this is very important to keep in mind. When you're watching your portfolio lose 30, 40, maybe 50 percent, let's, let's just use a nice round number of $100,000. Let's say your portfolio drops 35 percent, $35,000. That don't feel good when you're looking at it on a piece of paper on your computer screen. It looks feels real bad. 
But if you see it maybe goes down three Bitcoin, two and a half Bitcoin, three and a half Bitcoin, whatever it is, your mind doesn't freak out the same way it does. You're used to looking at dollars as a unit of measurement. And when you see it go down, you get a pit in your stomach. Now, eventually, hopefully you get to the point where even if you see that in dollar values, it doesn't matter. If you're looking on Binance, they're going to show you both. So you get used to it. But this is especially early on very important to remember because let's say you're doing short term or mid term training. Um, and you bought into something, and then the market does what it did yesterday. It goes down to 9,000 something. Oh, it's all, every crypto's over. We're done. It's a it's fucked. Well, oh, man, you no know, one got me into this, and now we're all screwed. Uh, and your dollars go down, and you're looking, you're like, all right, I got to cut bait. I've already lost 30%. You know, I've lost $3,000. I put in 10, cut and bait. But if you look at it in Bitcoin, maybe you actually even gain Bitcoin. For instance, if you've been looking during the crash, then is gaining Bitcoin, right? It's gaining Satoshis on it. We're right now at 62. Oh, someone just bought a shitload. Cool. But my point is, is it was going up steadily. It, it hit a bottom of about 55,000 Satoshis. And now we're looking somewhere right now at 62.3, but let's just say around the 60,000 mark. So I kept buying during the dips. Now the price of VEN also just went up right now. It's $6.34. But even when I was buying at the bottom and the Satoshis were lower, it, it was below prices I had got it with a different measurement. So this is really, really important to remember if you're operating under the premise that Bitcoin will be more or Ether will be more, if that's what your trading is, than it is today in the future, trade only in that value. Dollars will fuck you up. Now, Listen, if you, there are many times or several times where it's okay and maybe advantageous to look at dollars. One of those times would be if you're planning to cash out. You want to know, hey, what's going to, uh, someone not muted? No, everyone's muted, quiet still. Um, but basically, here's the thing. If you're cashing out, of course it's important to look at the fiat value of what you're going to cash out. You want to know, A, what you should be cashing out into if it's an altcoin. Do you want to cash into Ether, Bitcoin, potentially Litecoin? I don't really know why you... I mean, I guess if you're trying to be fast and you're going to GDAX or something, but you're going to want to look what major crypto you're going to want to cash out in, and then also what you're going to be able to sell that for on an exchange, right? So that's an important time to look at dollars. It's also important to look at dollars if you're trying to cash out for your principal. Like you have an investment strategy, you made a bunch of money, make sure you're playing with house money. When that time has arrived, of course, look at dollars. Just to be clear, when I'm saying fee the Satoshis over dollars, yes, that's how I check my portfolio 95% of the time. I am also very aware of the dollar value of my portfolio. But if you're a holder and you're planning on holding for three months, six months, a year, your dollar value over the short term really isn't that important. Now, here's another benefit of trading in Satoshis or Ether value relative to fiat. You get to tell which coins suck. When shit goes wrong, if your coin is plummeting with Bitcoin and then Bitcoin goes up and your coin is still down, you may want to do some research on why that's the case. If you hold a coin and the market takes a dump like it, this, like it did this year, but your thing still keeps going up in Satoshi value or holds it and dollars, like cough, cough, then you may be onto something. So you get to learn more about what you're doing if you're watching this value relative to Big Daddy, which is Bitcoin. And like I said, I know a lot of people are all down on Bitcoin. January threw us for a loop. Um, can you guys hear anything? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You guys are saying you cannot hear me or what? I'm going to stop until someone says they can hear me. Can hear me. Okay. You guys all hear me. Not Triple M is not muted. I have him as muted. Should I kick him? You want me to kick him? Can you guys still hear? I'll server mute him. How about now? Can you still hear him? I server muted him. If you can still hear him, I'm going to have to kick him. Okay, you can't hear him. Okay, here's the deal. Guys, if you join this and you're not muted and people point it out, I'm going to kick you next time. Not from the server, but from the chat just because it's important that everyone can hear this. I'm recording from my local end, so we won't hear anything else, so it's not a big deal, but please make sure that you don't have crosstalk and people can't hear because it's not considerate. Okay, uh, back to what I was saying. Satoshi's over fiat. Basically, it's as simple as this. 
it's just what I said at the beginning. If you think Bitcoin is going to be more expensive in the future, if you think Ethereum is going to be more expensive in the future, that's what you should be trading in, period. It also, you'll notice this, people who have been doing this for a little bit, people who have been doing well, they're going to trade in those two values. They're not going to be doing it in dollars. Dollars A will fuck with your head. It doesn't really give you an accurate representation of what's going on to the relativity of the coins you're trading with. So those are that's the quick in a nutshell reason. That's also why in this server, you will very, very rarely hear us talk about dollars. Maybe the sometimes, you know, once in a while you will, it's when we're talking about maybe end of year price. And like people will be like, what's the end of year price you have for VE chain? Then I'll give them in dollars because I have no fucking idea what Bitcoin is going to be at and what VE chain is going to be at relative to that. So I can't say, oh yeah, it's going to be 130,000 Satoshis because that could be either a lot of money or a little bit of money. So it's really important that you know when kind of the appropriate time to go back and forth. Now, in terms of a psychological advantage of trading in Satoshis, I'm going to give you uh, a case example for myself that really turned this light on for me. So let's talk about the first catalyst, right? The first catalyst is we see that there's some opportunity here in the crypto sphere to make money, to get in, to do well, right? That's the catalyst. Oh my God, this is, whoa, maybe, okay, it's working. The second catalyst is, is okay, how do I get an advantage in this market? You guys, I'm sure many of you know who just started, do not come in thinking, I'm going to trade in Satoshi value. That's the way to do it. You go with dollars. I put in 10, I can take out 100 if it goes up 10 times, right? That's how you're thinking about it. So you automatically have an advantage over most of the people doing this now, not all of them, but most of them, and probably everyone else who enters the market, including not a lot of them, but probably some big money. Big money is probably going to know someone who can get them in in a nice way because they're big money. But there is going to be, there are going to be people who are just thinking about dollars and not paying attention to this shit. And then when things go down, they pay in Excel. Um, so that is an important thing. I had something else to say, but I forgot it. Oh well. Um, maybe you guys can start asking some questions if you have them. First, let's start related to any of this stuff. And then if you have any general questions, you can put them in the voice chat text. And don't worry, Triple M. It's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. Sometimes we forget to mute ourselves. Um, so if you have any questions, type them in the voice chat text channel, and I will answer them. And if not, we'll wrap this up. This is my day off. My mom's got Eli. I'm relaxing doing this for you guys. Also, it's just a very common question. People will come in or ask me like, you know, I'm putting this in to take out dollars. Why do I give a shit about the, the Bitcoin price? You'll see why. You'll see why. If your portfolio has been going down by dollars and Bitcoin recently, like a lot, you definitely you know, you're, you're aware of what's going on. Um, okay. Any questions, Maddie? I see you typing. Squirrel, you are typing. This would be the opportunity to ask a free question. Doesn't have to be related to uh, Satoshi versus Fiat. Oh no, the case example, that's what it was gonna be. <laughs> I remembered. Okay, case example. So back in early December, um, I took a loan from my mom in the form of half of Bitcoin. And I had Bitcoin, I could've used my own, but I didn't want to, and I had gotten her into it, and she did well, and she had it. She was like, hey mom, let me, let me see what I can do with this. My goal was to make some money, right? Some dollars. Immediately the first week, this was December, I made like three, four thousand dollars. So like, you know, almost the entire value of the half of Bitcoin. It was like 65 or something like that. Um, and then I realized when I was looking at my portfolio, when I kept switching it back to Bitcoin, that if my mom was a bookie and needed this money back ASAP or my fingers are going to be broke, I'd have to dip into my reserve because I actually lost Bitcoin. So that's really, really important. Maceo, oh man, my, my dog barks. We're going to have a problem. That's really important to remember because if you're losing an asset that you're trying to gain on, that's not good. That's You don't want to ever have less than what you borrowed, right? So think about Friday. Smoke, you smoked all the weed. You don't want to do that. So the thing is, is if you start measuring in Satoshis, I was like, all right, let me think, is there a way I can make this Bitcoin more? So I switched, I switched, I switched my whole psychology around it. And I said, all right, I'm going to only start measuring this in Bitcoin value. That's what I'm going to do, period. 
Within a week and a half, I had quadrupled that Bitcoin. The half of Bitcoin turned into two Bitcoin. And I started to understand the value of only trading in Satoshis. So that is a quick little story of why it's important, how quickly once you grok the concept of only trading in a unit of measurement that's relative to the things you're trying to buy in, um, you know, it really has an, an impact on how you do here. The other thing this does is you start becoming a little less less obsessive and concerned about your entry points if you're using fiat because it's less about maybe where you're buying it of course if you're buying a tremendous amount you want to get an optimal price if you're going to spend it all at once but if you're just trying to get an altcoin on an exchange you don't have to worry about if bitcoin is 9700 versus you know 9900 or whatever a unit of measurement if you're looking at ether 1100 versus like you know 1020 because you're ultimately, once you have your your Ether or your Bitcoin or whatever you're getting to go trade for an alt, it's just the relative value versus the thing you're going to be purchasing. Obviously, if you have more, you can potentially get more, but it puts it takes the onus off trying to nail your entry exactly, which is very useful. You want to do that when you have some funds in a portfolio and you have specific day trading or week trading funds. But outside of that, you don't really need to be obsessed with it. So, okay. That's the case study. That's a little another. Satoshis, where do I get Satoshis? Okay. <laughs> if you're asking that question, you're probably going to have to start at the beginning of this talk and also uh, do a little more research. So a Satoshi is just a unit of measurement. It's one one millionth of a Bitcoin. So if you had a zero point and then you had seven more zeros and then a one after that, that's one Satoshi. Um, you can't, you have Satoshis if you have Bitcoin. Um, so that's an important thing. It's not a, a cryptocurrency. Um, okay. Any other questions related to either this, Satoshi versus Fiat, or anything else related to general market dynamics or, or anything? I'll address those and then we'll call it a wrap. We good otherwise? Everyone feeling good? Everyone should feel really good right now. If you're feeling upset, you're holding bags, things aren't going well, market's taking a shit, you're out of tune with the market. That's okay. Just note it. Things will pop back up. And don't get too crazy next time if you think everything is going to be up, up, and away forever. Um, so that's an important thing. I know a lot of people. I, here's Let me tell you what I notice. A lot of friends who got into this. Um, all my clients are happy for the most part, even if they're down a little bit because we had the talks well before any of this happened. But a lot of people have been getting into this. And I notice when the market doesn't turn around, when Bitcoin dumps, when Ether dumps, people get upset. They get testy. We start hearing about how Bitcoin's tech sucks. Market cap isn't justified. This is bullshit. This really has to grow up and mature. What's the matter with this market? And that's when everyone starts talking about these things. When things are up, new paradigm, economic, this is amazing. We're going to break the shackles. That's the wrong approach. You're fighting the fucking market if you're doing that. You want to be in an equanimous state of mind constantly. And if you're not, that's your opportunity to figure out why you're not. That means you're hoping, wishing, fighting against, for something. That's not worth it, guys. You, The truth is, is if you just buy something good and hold it for a year, you will make money. But if you really want to be in this space and figure out what the hell is going on and maybe outpace the market, um, you need to learn how to do it in a way that's comfortable. I would reckon to say that almost anyone can outpace the market if they want to. You can learn some of the skills, some of the technical analysis, some of the, the overarching meta skills. But if you're also, while you're learning those skills, you're exchanging your sanity for money, be it crypto or otherwise, what the fuck is the point of that? Don't, that's, you don't have to do that. So we now have this wonderful opportunity, because we're really early in, to note how we feel when things are going well when they're not going well, and when they're just right in the middle. So this is a really important thing to keep in mind as you're doing this. Uh, here's a question from Squirrel. If you're making a first-time entry, so necessarily from fiat, is it okay to be looking at the dollar price of an altcoin to spot an entry point? But then once it just focus on stocks, yes, this is a really good, really great question. So uh, I'm going to highlight this in the easiest possible example. 10,000 VE chain, 10,000 VEN is a strength node. Let's say you're entering into the market, you have no crypto, you have no anything. This is, and you're like, I want a strength node, Noah. This is what I want. I'm ready to pay right now as we speak $62,000 to get a strength node. Let's do it. This is what I would recommend you do. Of course, you look at the dollar value there. You're going to buy it in Ether. Hey, Eli. Uh, Eli, I called my dog Eli. Maceo, stop. I'm trying to record a crypto. Pop. 
Maceo, this is what I was afraid of. Go to your bed. Go to your bed. He doesn't actually go, but it makes him be quiet. Uh, so this is what I would recommend if you're trying to get a $62,000 strength node. Buy it in Ether right away. Go buy that. Convert it. Go on GDAX. Go on Gemini. Wire the, Gemini, wire the money over. Get it. $62,000. Kick it over to Ether. Hope the value is maintained somewhere around there. So maybe send some extra. Buy it and relax. So yes, it is absolutely important to look at the dollar value if you have an exact amount of money you want to put into that alt. Recognize that it's subject to change. You know, the price can move either for Ether, Bitcoin, um, or the alt you're trying to buy. So that is a really good question. Of course, you want to look at dollars when it's your initial entry point. But more importantly, you want to know that when you put it in something, are you going to be able to buy roughly the same amount of it. Because even if the price in dollars goes up, if Ether goes up or Bitcoin goes up, you still get roughly the same amount. Okay, here's my friend. I guarantee that Maceo was gonna bark pretty heavily for about a minute. And then I'll <laughs> Come in. Oh, he's going back to the car. And Maceo, go to your bed, go. Sorry guys. This is, this is my life. This is how it works. Go to your Okay, sorry. He's a good dog. All right, another question. Uh, seems to me that the coin market would need to have one coin, e.g. BTC, as a stable currency for it to last, or else the dollar might get pushed onto all exchanges by regulators, or that regulators could squelch the markets by requiring all exchanges to offer the ability to cash in. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> I think <laughs> the fiat to altcoin gateways... Um, <laughs> that's not something the government wants right now. They don't want, it's like your bank when you try to wire from your bank to somewhere else, why they sometimes give you shit about it. They don't want you taking your money out of that. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, listen, there's Tether. Tether serves as a de facto dollar. There are Tether pairings on a lot of different exchanges. Um, so you can theoretically, you know, get it like that and you can purchase fiat into Tether. So there's ways to essentially skirt this. Personally, I don't buy any of this Tether FUD by the way, I imagine they have the assets to back it up. I, I really don't, I don't think anything of it. Um, I never tether. I never tether because that's gambling on Bitcoin. And I suck at gambling on Bitcoin. You know when I gamble on Bitcoin? When it's super fucking low, I buy a little bit of it and I wait for it to go up. That's how I gamble on Bitcoin. I don't, I don't try to time the price. I'm not good enough at technical analysis. I think it's too easily manipulated. So I personally don't do that. Um, if you have the confidence and are good at it and you want to scalp and you want to make your profits on Bitcoin and Tether and all that, go for it. Not my strategy. Don't think it ever will be. Um, by stable, I mean not as much fluctuation. Um, I don't know, what is this question exactly? I don't know. You can ask that again in another way, sine wave. I don't exactly understand the non-fluctuation. I see someone typing. I will take this question when it comes in. Let's see what it is. I've been having a great time the past few days. I know some of us are losing money, but we're not really losing it. Is there a benefit to wiring versus Gemini versus GDEX? Yeah. <laughs> the benefit is you're on one is a federally insured <laughs> compliant exchange where if you get they get hacked or you lose your money, you get it back. The other one, you don't. <laughs> so that would be the benefit of wiring to Gemini. That said, you're not going to lose your money with Coinbase. They're just criminals. Just, just That's the important thing to keep in mind. You know why Bitcoin Cash, Bcash is on my blacklist? Because Roger Ver is a criminal. And it's essentially a centralized coin. And criminals will do criminal things every opportunity they get. They don't owe you any allegiance. Coinbase have proven themselves to be criminals. Therefore, I don't really you know, trust them. That said, if you really want to wire your money there, I've done it. I have clients do it. It's totally fine. You're not going to get fucked. But if you have, if you're not in a rush, sign up with Gemini. It's a no brainer. Um, I don't think Gemini offers Litecoin pairing, but who, who cares really? Um, so that is the benefit. If you're signing up, recognize it'll probably take you a little bit longer to get uh, verified with Gemini. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> I don't, like I've said, I don't think Coinbase is going to be around in two years. I think the SEC is going to bop them. Um, okay. Maceo, please. Any other questions? I have to go chastise my dog. Maceo. I see one other thing coming in. Cool. Didn't realize that. Yes, that's an important thing. All right, guys. I'm going to cut up one more coming in. Maceo? I swear to God, buddy. I swear to God. Maceo, 
All right. I'm cutting this short, guys. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, I will be in the server.